Now, underneath this heading, I've asked you to draw this uh, basic right angled triangle again. And um, you can label it accordingly. So all we know about this triangle at the moment is that it's right angled. And everything else is kind of up for grabs. They're all pronumerals. They could be equal to anything, right? Now in this triangle, if we say theta is this guy in the corner, like I said it was up here, then you can tell me what sine theta is equal to in this particular triangle. What is it in this triangle? A over C is opposite on hypotenuse. Very good. Likewise, you can tell me cos theta will not be A over C, it'll be B over C. B over C. And then you finish off with tan, which is opposite on adjacent. Okay. Now, in other words, and this is worth, um, worth writing down, in other words, we think of these trigonometric objects, we think of them as ratios. Right? It's this side over that side, and we just compare different ones. Okay? So that's why this began with thinking about trigonometric ratios. That's why every time you need a triangle. Every time you need a triangle. But when I started out this topic, I said to you, trigonometry is important to us as human beings because it appears in more than just right angled triangles. They're kind of hiding in lots of other places. And so to illustrate that, what I want you to do is underneath this triangle, I want you to draw a nice big Cartesian plane. Maybe, um, uh, let's see. Maybe 10 centimeters high, 10 centimeters across, 10 by 10. So draw me a nice Cartesian plane. Now, <laughs> go over the page. That's fine. That's fine. Yes. Can you not see? That's um, yeah, yeah. It's a perfect, perfect scale. That's exactly ten centimeters. I measured it out very carefully. Um, on your Cartesian plane, I want you to draw an object that might be a little bit surprising. With its center at the origin, I'd like you to draw me a circle. Make it as large as you possibly can on your Cartesian plane. What? What? <laughs> okay, now, you're 10. Yes. All the way across. All the way across. I don't think your page, most people's pages are not big enough to go, yeah. Okay, now, um, I'm going to ask her something which I don't, I don't usually ask for, because um, I don't usually like it, but in, the, in these circumstances we're going to need it. I'm going to ask you for this next part of the explanation to be silent, not because I don't want you to speak, but because I want your concentration to be intense, because this is a really hard idea. People all the way up until the end of year 12, if they don't learn it properly in year 10, they just never understand it, okay? Um, so I, I know you guys can get it, and that's why I want you to focus really clearly. If what that requires is that you don't have a pen in your hand, then, then don't put a pen in your hand. But if you can draw and listen hard, then do that. But don't speak. I need your mind engaged, not your mouth. This is a circle. It has its center at the origin. To make a circle, to define a circle, you need to know where it is and you also need to know how big it is. This is a particular circle with a radius of 1. So from the center to this edge would be 1. Up to the top would be 1. If I continue that, you can see over to the left hand side, this is going to be negative 1. And the same down here. This object is really important. When its center is at the origin and its radius is 1, we call it, and you should label it as such, we call it the unit circle. Unit as in one. You know, like a unicycle has one wheel. So this is the unit circle. Now, sine, cos, and tan, we've been very used to. We've only ever defined them and thought of them in terms of right-angled triangles. 
but in fact, they are hiding inside the unit circle if we know how to see it. Now, if you can, grab another color, and to help us see where sine, cos, and tan are hidden inside here, I want us to start by imposing a right angle triangle inside. We're going to get rid of it eventually, but I want to find it in there first. So draw a right angle triangle like this, but watch how I do it. I'm going to start from the origin, I'm going to go to some spot on the circumference, like so, and that's going to be the hypotenuse of my right angle triangle. Then you can draw a length down and a length across. There's my right angle triangle. Just like in this one, I'm going to put theta here in the corner. And now I'm going to think about how to find the trigonometric ratios tucked inside there. Okay. This right angle triangle starts at the origin, it's a hypotenuse starts at the origin and goes to the circumference. So therefore, without any calculation, because you know what kind of circle this is, you can tell me what the length of the hypotenuse is. What is it? Wow. It's just one, because it's the radius, right? Does that make sense? This is in the unit circle. So from the origin to anywhere on the circle, you have a distance of one. But that means I can find out these lengths just like you found them out in the review questions, right? Because if you think about this, right? If these coordinates here are x and y, right? The coordinates of this point on the circumference. Then that means x and y are lengths on this triangle, right? Where is x? If x was, say, something like half, right? Then it would mean from the uh, middle here, you go one half of a unit across, and that's your x coordinate, right? So therefore, this is going to be x. That's what the x coordinate means. Start from zero and go to the right that many units. Okay? Where would y be? It's that vertical length, isn't it? Right? Inside that right angled triangle, it's the height here. Now, just like you did in this triangle, you can state sine and cos and tan in terms of these lengths here, right? In terms of the ratios that you know. So, in this triangle, let's start with sine. What is sine theta in this particular triangle? Well, it's opposite on hypotenuse, do you agree? Which is just y over 1. So the over 1 doesn't change anything. When you divide by 1, the number is the same. So therefore, y is sine theta. That's a bit weird. We've been attaching sine and cos and tan to angles, but this tells us you can actually use them to also describe lengths. I can use exactly the same logic to think about cos. Cos is going to be adjacent on hypotenuse. In this triangle, what is adjacent on hypotenuse? It's x over 1, which just like before, the over 1 doesn't change anything. So therefore, this x is simply equal to cos theta. OK. Now, what that means is, you see how I said, oh, the coordinates are x and y. Well, now I know what x and y are. I don't have to call them, I don't have to have new pronumerals, I can use the pronumerals I've already got. I can call them, the x coordinate is cos theta, cos theta, and I can call the y coordinate sine theta. Okay? Now, that's weird. <laughs> I'm not used to thinking of um, trigonometry in the context of coordinates, uh, let alone circles, but this is true. The trigonometric ratios told you they were the case. Now what's beautiful about this is therefore, uh, and don't, don't destroy this on your diagram, I'm just going to do it on this one. We put this triangle in here to help us understand things. But if I got rid of the triangle, everything we said about all of these lengths and the right angle triangle that we imagined, all of these things are still true. They're no less true than they were before, it's just that how we got them is now hidden from view. Okay. So therefore, here are the trigonometric functions. They're not ratios anymore. They're not ratios or we don't have to think of them because what are they the ratios of? There's no triangle in here, right? I'm just thinking of it in terms of this circle, okay? So the heading that I asked you to leave space for 
is no longer trigonometric ratios. We now call these guys, even though they're, they're made of the same DNA, we call them the trigonometric functions. That's a really good question, and I'll come to it after we land what's going on. Now, before we, before we answer that question, we've got cos and sine, but I promised that we would also define tan, right? We would also define tan. Now, if you think back, because you, you guys still have that uh, triangle in front of you, right? Tan is going to be uh, opposite on adjacent, right? Opposite on adjacent. So that's going to be y over x. Do you agree? y over x. But hold on a second. We know what y and x are. We, we know what they're equal to. They're sine theta and cos theta. So I don't need to think of tan as opposite on adjacent. I can think of it just in terms of sine and cos and the angle, wherever you happen to be, 